Now, poor life decisions have brought me here, where we own a 1988 Volvo 240. And what better way to top it off is by adding some Chevrolet wheels, also from the 80s. You'll see a trend here. I've been working on this project in the background of all of our other videos for a little while now, and it's finally time to, well, it, we gotta get, it's gotta get out of the driveway. I got, we gotta get something else in the garage. So, let me start this off by saying I'm a huge fan of Volvos. Also a huge fan of Chevrolets. It's a really weird, oh, not, not a big deal. So when I saw the wheels off of a 1980s Firebird GTA, Trans Am, all that goodness, I fell in love, and I just said, I've gotta have it. But, Fortunately, there's some weird offsets happening with the Volvos and lug pattern that makes it so you can't just easily bolt these bad girls on. Caveat, you can actually do that. It's just that they stick out really far. So I'm here today to take you on my journey of getting these wheels on this car. But let's go ahead and go knuckles deep into wheel spacers and why they just don't really work for this intended application. Now I've got no problem with a wheel spacer slash adapter because it is adapting a bolt pattern. The Volvo bolt pattern is five on 108 and the Chevy bolt pattern for these wheels is five on 120. That, that's what this does right here. Now the issue is, is that's T-H-I-C-C-C or about an inch thick. The issue is, as you can see here, the wheels are already basically flush with the wheel well. This spacer goes from aggressive to, whoa, something's wrong in the looks department, unfortunately, really fast. So, so I started doing some research and asking around the different ways I could swap this bolt pattern. Now, initially, I was trying to swap the bolt pattern on the car side, but unfortunately, with the Volvo's hub designs, front and rear, a 5 on 120 bolt pattern is so much larger than the 5 on 108, there's just not enough meat on the actual hubs to press it in. And the couple companies I did find that offered it, well, they didn't offer the bolt pattern I needed, <laughs> true fashion. And since I already own these wheels and I can't bother to explain to my wife how I made a bad purchase, no, that's not, that's not an option. We've, we've got to do something else. Well, that leaves us with redrilling the wheels. Now, that's something we can't do here. Well, I mean, I've got an impact and a MIG welder that's got steel wire in it, so it makes sense that, no, I, I can't do this. But I did get in contact with a few different companies and went with one called Dr. Rim. Now they're located in Florida and I'm not. So I ended up having to ship these wheels there. The only thing special that they requested of me was to include prepaid labels in the boxes so they wouldn't have to go and deal with shipping it, which that actually makes a lot of sense. And they didn't mark up the shipping because I paid for it beforehand. So I would actually say that's a win. Now, they were there for about three days, and during that time, they welded the holes shut of the 520 hole pattern and re-drilled it to five on 108. But they did warn me that this is a very small pattern for these wheels, but we're gonna fix that by 3D printing a custom center cap just to cover up all my bad decisions. And on the back, you can see where it was welded shut and then machined flat again. And if you're interested, look down below in the comments and I'll put all the companies and the products that I use to get this thing doing things down below and while you're there do that th okay wow that's awkward but uh, i mean it's not the size that counts it's how you use it no do the little click thing too okay wow would you just look at that proud of you you know that right oh yeah there she is don't worry about that dent don't worry about that trim falling off don't worry about all those random rectangles of white either. Now the first step to making our 80s Volvo even more 80s is popping off the center cap and the center cap. Now it should also be noted deep within that diary of ours that I went ahead and drilled and tapped the four extra bolt holes that were just kind of chilling here. I'm not exactly sure why they were just chilling on this wheel, but these are gonna be what hold my center cap on in the future. That's not how it used to was. It used to was with Firebird with an extra set of lugs that like threaded over the other lug, which is just a terrible idea, but it, we're gonna have to throw that center cap in the trash anyways. So I wanted to go ahead and get something else ready before I went ahead and had the tires mounted and balanced. And speaking of tires, I went with Yokohama Ascend GTs. Now I found these are actually just a really comfortable, but like sportier tire. I went with 205 60s. And in true fashion, that leads us to our next fitment problem. I tried to bolt these wheels on and well, 
um, they did okay until I bolted them on. Unfortunately, the spokes of the wheel grind against the front face of the caliper. Now we've got two options here. Either we grind the caliper off, I hear what you're saying, that's, that's an idea. Okay, so we'll, we'll table that one for a little while. The second is to actually go back to the spacer route. So I went ahead and ran to the hardware store and got a whole bunch of half inch washers and threw them on the wheel hub. I got it to the point where I could bolt the wheel on and have it still spin. And the clearance I needed was 4.8 millimeters. That's just under five. I know the phrase is cut once. Oh, that's not it. I know the phrase is measure once, cut twice, but I'm more of a bring the actual thing to the saw after you brought it to the thing that needs to go on and then just cut it to fit. So one millimeter clearance between a rotor or brake caliper and the wheel, that just isn't gonna fly here. So I went ahead and went to six millimeter spacer. Two millimeters, that's twice the clearance. And then once I got that spacer on there, we bolted her in with some new lug nuts. Now I will say I had bought extended wheel studs for this car once I knew I had to install a spacer. But the factory wheel lugs will actually accept a six millimeter spacer and still have enough threads to properly engage. But a Volvo tuning company called BNE Dynamics does actually make a nice direct fit extended wheel stub for this car if you need it. And now while I think it's a good idea on every car to torque the wheels to spec, well, I think it's really important here because this is like the first time these wheels, which are brand newly machined, are actually mating to the hub. So we went ahead and torqued them to 100 foot pounds. And then I repeated the exact same procedure on the rear wheels. Now it should be noted that they don't need that six millimeter spacer for functionality. I actually do think they need at least a six millimeter spacer just for looks because on the rear of a Volvo, the track width is actually quite a bit narrower than on the front. And um, without a spacer, it looks, well, like this. And honestly, kind of silly, a little bit sad. Now that we got the wheels installed, we know that 100% they fit. And I don't have to explain to my wife that I'm an idiot. Well, we gotta bust out the laptop and figure out some sort of center cap. Now this is the factory center cap, or well, a reproduction of it. The issue is this was <laughs> clipped into that ring and I've destroyed all functionality of that. And the lug mounting area just leaves a little bit to be desired. So I went ahead and threw something together in CAD that covered up that whole area in our pre-existing bolt holes and some welding slop and it swapped to the Prancing Moose emblem instead of, well, the uh, Fire Turkey emblem, which makes a little bit more sense given the car. After a couple fitment adjustments and revisions, well, we had a working piece. And I also learned something fun, that that wheel is not symmetrical, which blows my mind that a wheel isn't symmetrical. I mean, I guess there's probably wheels out there that aren't. Well, I know there are wheels out there that aren't symmetrical, but one that looks symmetrical isn't. And I still don't know if I can sleep at night realizing that this wheel isn't actually a mirror image of itself. Now I printed all the test pieces in PLA because it's cheap and easy to work with, but the finals are getting printed out of ASA plastic, which is gonna be UV resistant and have a way better heat to tolerance than, well, garbage plastic that melts in the sun. And here's the moment you've been waiting for. What do these wheels look like in a car that looks like it's actually been lifted? Oh yeah, just check out that stock ride height. Eh, they don't make them like that anymore for legal reasons. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Matt, this is the best looking thing I've ever seen in my life. How do I do this project? Well, go back and rewatch the video. Did you not, were you not paying attention? Now the second question that you're probably asking yourself, Matt, how much does all this fun goodness cost? So, the wheel redrilling project was $150 per wheel. So it was a $600 bill that I paid to get all four of these wheels welded and redrilled and machined back to something that resembles a wheel. Now I found these wheels on Facebook Marketplace and paid a cool $300 for them. While that is a little bit on the high end for what these wheels go for, they're actually in pretty relatively good shape based on their age. And while everybody has their preference and different use cases for tires, the Yokohama GTs that I chose are right around $112 a piece, including mounting and balancing from discount tire. We're all about $1,400-ish. Now you might be saying that's way too much money to spend on a car that is probably only worth $1,400. When you say it like that, it really does hurt me emotionally, but I think it looks cool. And once we get her lowered down a little bit, I think the whole look will It'll, it'll, it'll get, it can only get better unless it gets worse. And 
Uh, you saw earlier that we got a little bit of white vinyl showing. Yeah, that's not paint. We're actually wrapping this car a white metallic. So keep on a lookout for a video where we're actually talking about some of the different white pearl and white metallic vinyls and some of the trial and tribulations of vinyling basically a brick. But if you got any questions that I didn't answer or things you think of, throw it down in the comments and I'll try my best to figure out your weird wheel situation because I want you to be happy. And 80 Chevy wheels is what makes us happy. Have a good one. And speaking of tires, I went with Yokohama Advent, Advent and Ascend. <laughs> Where is your box at? I got a box. B and E, B and S, B, B, S, N, E, ESPN. I don't know. ES, buy your wheel studs for ESPN.